Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to make spring animation in Blender. Let's get started. Press Shift A and add a cube object. Press numpad 1 to switch to the front view. Hit the S key, then Z key to scale down. Add another cube object. Move the cube down on the Z axis. All right, let's create a spring. Add a circle mesh. Hit the R key, type 90 degrees, and rotate the circle on the X axis. G key to move the circle down, and S key to scale down. Press Ctrl A and apply rotation and scale transforms. It's important to apply transforms before adding any modifier, otherwise we can meet unexpected results. Now we'll add a screw modifier. It takes a profile object to create a helix-like shape on a specific axis. We want the circle to make a helix around the Z axis. So, we need to set the origin of the circle to the Z axis. Right-click, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. We're ready to apply the screw modifier. Click the modifier tab, search for screw and add a screw modifier. You can set the screw value to determine the offset value along its axis. Set the screw value to 0.22. This is the spring that has not yet been stretched. The iteration value determines how many times to apply the screw operation. Set the iteration value to 4. If we switch the screw axis to X, the spring will be created around the X axis. Switch back to the Z axis. You can also increase the number of steps to have a smoother spring in the viewport and render results. Alright, you can simulate the spring stretching using the screw value. However, when we increase the screw value, it stretches in the wrong direction. To fix this, rotate the spring 180 degrees on the Y-axis and move down. That's it. Let's create the connection parts. Tab key to switch to edit mode. Press Shift S and cursor to selection. Go back to object mode. Add a plane. Switch to edit mode. M key to merge the vertices at the center. So, the geometry will have only one vertex. Press numpad 3 to switch to the right view. Hit the E key to extrude. Switch to the front view and extrude. Switch to the side view and extrude. Select these three vertices. Press shift Control b to bevel vertices and scroll up to add more vertices. Go back to Object Mode, right-click and Convert to Curve. Click the Curve Data Properties tab, open up the Geometry section and increase the Depth value. Right-click and make Shade Smooth. Switch to edit mode, select the first control point, and move the point back a little bit. Press Alt-S and scale up the radius. Switch back to object mode. Right-click and convert to mesh. Add a subdivision surface modifier. Press Shift-D to duplicate the section and connect it with the bottom part. Apply the modifiers. Select the first connection part, then select the upper cube. Press Ctrl-J to join the objects into one. In the same way, join the bottom parts. All right, it's time to animate the spring. First, add a rigid body for the weights. Select the upper cube, click the Physics Properties tab, and add a rigid body. Switch the rigid body type to passive, so the cube will stay in place when we play the animation. Select the lower cube and add a rigid body. The rigid body type will be active this time. So, when we play the animation, it will fall by gravity force. All right. Add a generic spring constraint between the cubes. Select the upper cube, 
Hold down the Shift key and select the lower cube. Go to the Object menu, Rigid Body, and Connect. So, an empty object will be added. This empty object represents the constraint between the cubes. You can see the constraint has been added in the right panel. Switch the Rigid Body Constraint Type to the Generic Spring. Scroll down to the Spring section and enable Spring on the Z-axis of the empty object. Let's play the animation. That's it. All right, we're gonna simulate the spring now. Select the spring and go to the modifier tab. We can add keyframes for the screw value to simulate the spring. I want to use drivers, so. The spring will stretch based on how the cube falls on the z-axis. Go over the screw value, right-click, and add a driver. Select the lower cube as the driver object with the eyedropper. Right-click, Edit Driver, and open the driver settings again. Switch the driver type to z-location. It means the spring will stretch when the lower cube moves on the global z-axis. However, it stretches in the wrong direction along the z-axis. To fix this, edit the driver and place the negative value next to the variable. Another problem is excessive stretching of the spring. It's because we created the spring in four iterations. So we need to divide the variable by four. That's it. But the spring is not in its initial position. We need to apply the location. Select the cube, press Ctrl A, and apply the location. That's it. We can adjust the stiffness or damping values of the spring. Select the empty object and go to the Physics Properties tab. The stiffness value controls how much the spring resists the tension or compression. The lower we set the stiffness, the more the spring will stretch. The damping value controls the amount of damping in stretching behavior. The higher the damping setting, the faster the spring will be damped. Thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial.